Is Biden in Germany right now? He, I don't think he's still there. He was there at the end of the week. I think he probably is back home. I'm not sure where he is today. Okay, because we... I was I, trying to look at uh, and see. Uh, Zelensky w- I, apparently was not part of this mess meeting or because I was, I was worried. I was on the edge of my seat that Zelensky was going to be there. He's going to give him the rah-rah. And Joe would say, well, you're the last person I talked to. So go ahead and use those missiles on Moscow. Yeah, I mean, we've not seen kind of what I think a lot of us were expecting. Uh, Zelensky, uh, Zelensky's been uh, pushing for nuclear weapons as well. Uh, he's been making, I mean, you've heard that commentary throughout over the years, but most especially in the last month or so, there's been this increase in talks coming from the Ukrainians about how we need a nuclear weapon. Either the West has to get involved and protect us from Russia, or we need a nuclear weapon to protect us from Russia. Um, and but this falls into Zelensky's uh, victory plan, which he presented last week in public, in which essentially was more of the same. Uh, we need more weapons. We need to go into to NATO. Uh, it had this really ridiculous aspect where American troops, if they leave Europe, they'll be backfilled by Ukrainian troops, which was something that Boris Johnson, of all people, presented a couple of months ago. And I think that should be very striking to people. It shows you the type of relationships that exist here and of people who sit and communicate and come up with these ideas together. Because um, Bo- Johnson said that a month or so ago in a very high profile manner. Um, but also, too, there's these supposed secret annexes to his victory plan. And the thought is that one of those annexes may deal with getting the Ukrainians nuclear weapons, uh, which I don't think is any possibility at all. I think that much more likely you'll see nuclear proliferation in the Middle East, uh, m- possibly not Iran. Um, we'll see what happens with Israel and Iran in terms of where the Iranians feel they are forced to go. Right now, the Iranians do not have a nuclear weapons program. They have a civilian nuclear we- nuclear program that has the capability of becoming a nuclear weapons program. And experts differ on how long it would take for them to build a bomb and then build the uh, 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 infrastructure and you know rockets to deliver it. Anyone, people say from between a week and a year, I don't know. Um, but I think it's but also, too, the Iranians are under a religious order not to develop such weapons. Um, that's been around for more than 20 years now, that religious order. And However, in recent months, the Iranians have said, due to the circumstances that we are living under, due to the, the attacks that we are facing, we may have to revisit that religious order and consider having nuclear weapons. But aside from the Iranians, I think it's, it's likely in the next five or 10 years, you'll see uh, a nation like Turkey get a nuclear weapon. Um, but in, the, in 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 Eastern Europe, um, yeah, there certainly is, you know, you could find people in Washington, D.C., find people in London, find people in Brussels who agree with this idea of giving the Ukrainians a nuclear weapon. Uh, but I, I don't think there's any possibility of that whatsoever. Um, and the, the <clears throat> horror show that is that Ukraine war where tens and tens of thousands are dying, um, there is a estimate put out in if the New York Times or Financial Times or something, it's one of those places in the last week that the, the current estimates are more than 600,000 dead and killed on both sides. And I, I would think that's probably about right. Uh, I mean, in this destruction, uh, the complete destruction of the eastern part of that country um, and the environmental uh, degradation is just unknowable. Um, so you put all that uh, 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 horror together and you look at that and you just see you don't see a way out for that war. Uh, you don't see a, a path forward to end that war, just as we don't see a path forward in you in, in the Middle East. And so just as I was talking before about the Middle East, how we're sitting here accepting this, accepting um, either just, just continued destruction and suffering and death with uh, potentially uh, calamitous consequences, ruinous consequences. Mm. Um, we're doing the same in Eastern Europe and have been doing that for, for a, a couple of years now. And at some point, our luck's going to run out. It's just as easy as that. Our luck's going to run out and, 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 mm-hmm. and, and time will catch up. Events will catch up. And I, I think the most analogous uh, aspect is, is probably the, the First World War. Um, mm-hmm. And why I get worried about the First World War is that if people remember in 1912, 1913, there were the Balkans Wars, which were horrible, brutal, terrible wars. Ethnic cleansing took pl- place. 
perhaps a million and a half people were killed. And the world was horrified at the scale of the slaughter in those Balkan Wars. And that was 1912 and 1913. And then 1914 happens, the First World War, 15 million dead. And nobody really remembers the Balkans Wars. And that's what my fear is. Are, are we just at that stage now where what we're in is, is, you know, the Balkans Wars? And mm. what's to come is that world war. The Guns of August. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. People haven't read Barbara Tuchman's The Guns of August, uh, The March into War. Uh, yeah, it, it is. It is. Uh, it's necessary reading. It's necessary reading. And that's what it feels like where we're just waiting for these events to happen. Uh, yeah. the, the, it's accept, accepted, again, that the Israelis have to launch this attack and the Americans will support them in, in some way or fashion. <laughs> and then it's accepted that the Iranians will have to respond. And then at that point, what other things do we have to accept that uh, we, we, we're, we're told ha are, are a fait accompli that have to occur uh, without, you know, and meanwhile, this march, mm -hmm. just as Tuchman describes, this march towards 15 million dead. And God knows what, how many will be in this case. Exactly. So you mentioned that um, uh, there doesn't seem to be any path out of uh, the Ukraine-Russia situation. There doesn't seem to be any path out of the Middle East. But Joe Biden, he knows the path, right? <laughs> he does. Could, and, and I should say there are paths out. I mean, there are. Hey, negotiation. Yeah. That's the that's the way out. The way to, to end the crisis in the Middle East, uh, end the, the, the genocide in Gaza, which the United States could do immediately by an arms embargo on Israel, by dropping its protection of, of Israel, by saying we're not going to provide you with economic support, which it looks like we will be doing in the coming years because your economy is bleeding out because of this. Um, and it that would be it. That would be it. Uh, and the same in Ukraine, um, the United the, 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 when we the, the United States, NATO, um, Ukrainians have spurned uh, negotiation attempts over and over and over again. And this is all well documented now. You know, a year ago, if you said this, or even six months ago, if you said this, maybe not six months ago, maybe we were in October, beginning of the year, if you said this, you'd be labeled a conspiracy theory. And mm -hmm. since then, the the foreign, foreign Affairs Magazine, Wall Street Journal, New York Times have all published lengthy and detailed reports mm -hmm. on the negotiations process that began almost as soon as the war began in February 2022, led by the Russians or, or spurred by or, 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 or in, uh, um, before by the Russians. And then others like Reuters have have reported on Russian attempts to negotiate uh, after that, uh, including through this year. Uh, and even after when Ukraine goes into Kursk in Russia, uh, that incursion, um, you have the Russians immediately saying, that's it, negotiations are off. And then within a couple of weeks, Putin saying, no, no, we will negotiate. We will. But the problem for Ukraine and NATO and the Americans is that as they keep pushing off these negotiations, the terms get worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, so where the deal they could have had two and a half years ago uh, or even three years ago, because the Russians are trying to negotiate in the fall of 2021, would have meant just a return to the Minsk two accords, which basically meant a a. a, a, a uh, autonomy essentially for Eastern uh, Ukraine. Well, those days are those terms, those days, that mindset, that mood, that that willingness by the Russians is long gone. And so every month, every you know, however long that the Ukrainian the Ukrainians and the Americans and NATO uh, delay in negotiating means worse terms for the inevitable. Because the other side of that is collapse. And that's what you're looking at potentially as the way that this thing ends in Ukraine is collapse, is either Ukrainian military collapse um, mm -hmm. or um, which I think maybe which which yeah. which which is likely. But I think what might be maybe more likely is a Ukrainian economic collapse or a Ukrainian government collapse. Mm -hmm. And at that point, then you have a real problem because you have essentially a failed state with all these weapons, these generals who become warlords. And you have a scenario similar to Syria or Afghanistan or Libya there in Eastern Europe. And how do the Poles, how do the Romanians deal with that? What do the Russians do? None of those countries want to see that occur. The Russians certainly don't want to see that occur, you know, on their, on their, you know, front yard, side yard, backyard, however you want to, yeah. uh, you know, explain it. So uh, it really is a very dangerous uh, position. And this is why, you know, if those are the two outcomes, 
um, then why aren't you going towards negotiations? Because the other outcome is, is, is incredibly dangerous. And uh, what the, what could come from that is simply unknowable. Think about the other examples I gave, Afghanistan, Syria, Libya, uh, you know, and the likelihood of what would that look like? So mm -hmm. there are ways out of this. It's just that there's no political will to do so.